My friends, Jesus continually withdrew from people, daily life activities, and the demands of his ministry to be alone with the Father and pray. Jesus' solitude and silence are a major theme in the Gospels. This is how he made important decisions. This is how he dealt with troubling emotions and constant demands of his ministry. It's how he taught his disciples. This is how he prepared for important ministry events. This is how he prepared for his death on the cross. His solitude is how he went deeper in his love fellowship with the Heavenly Father. Jesus invites us to join him. Good morning once again. This is Tim Weaver coming to you in a, a short devotional on how to linger with Jesus. I love the Gospel of Mark. He speaks in bullet points and he, he gets directly to the point. Some Bible scholars say that Mark tells his gospel in a hurry. Indeed, his favorite expression is immediately or at once, which shows up 39 times in my NASB Bible. But like Jesus, Mark is not in a hurry except to, to get to the cross. Mark repeatedly pauses to give us glimpses into Jesus' solitude and silence with the Heavenly Father. The Gospel of Mark invites us to join him and be unhurried with Jesus, unhurried in silence and solitude, lingering with Jesus. It can be our way of life, too. We, we see Jesus modeling this lingering posture in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And in Mark 3, 13, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him. Jesus modeled the need to be unhurried the need to linger and to have a, an intentional quiet time of solitude with our Savior, the King of Kings. If we can't do it now in this specific season of life, when can we? This is probably one of, of my biggest challenges of sustainability, but I have an excuse. Maybe like some of you, it's called the I Am So Busy disease. Have you heard this book by John Mark Comer called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry? He asked the key question, how are you doing? So many times, my brothers and sisters, my response has been good. I, I am so busy. This is not the right response. I have learned that my busyness actually prevents me from intentionally slowing down to linger with Jesus. In this book, Mark Colmer quotes Walter Adams. He's the spiritual director of C.C. Lewis. He says, to walk with Jesus is to walk with a slow, unhurried pace. Hurry is the death of prayer, and only impedes and spoils our work. Here is another quote from John Ortberg. For many of us, the great danger is not that we will renounce our faith. It is that we will become so distracted and rushed and preoccupied that we will settle for a mediocre vision of it. We will just skim our lives instead of actually living them. Dallas Willard, you've heard of him a well-regarded Christian scholar and author stated that an over-busy, digitally distracted life of speed is the greatest threat to the spiritual life that we face in the modern world. To say it another way, my friends, I have lost the ability to linger with Jesus. There is a time for all of life's duties, and doing those duties with a, a heart of prayer and worship is our call, but Without time spent quietly listening to his heart, we will miss the greater things. I have missed the greater things. And if our time with him is marked by a work mindset, something to be checked off on our daily to-do list, we will never experience the fullness of his presence. Jesus is calling us to come, to dine with him in quietness and solitude. Jesus is calling us to linger with him. Steve Smith in the book Spirit Walk states that each day, preferably in the morning, we need unhurried time to be alone with God, to linger in his presence. I love the word linger. It gives me an impression of not being in a hurry. When we get so busy that we are neglecting our time of lingering with God, we are, are too busy. When our responsibilities are the heaviest is when we need that time with him the most. 
when we think we are too busy to spend quality time with God, praying and meditating on his word, we are fooling ourselves. It is only when we linger with Jesus that everything else in life can fall into place. It is only when we spend time with him that we can overcome the dreaded, I am so busy, sickness, sickness or disease. How busy are you? Do you have days when you feel you can barely keep your head above water? Yes, I do. I have those days. How has the busyness affected your personal relationship with God? For me, it has impacted my intimacy with Christ. Have you put your time with him on the back burner or something to take care of when you get a chance? Yes, I have many times. Or are you neglecting your quiet time altogether? Sad to say, but yes, many times I have. During one of Jesus' visits to the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, Mary lingered at the feet of Jesus while Martha worked frantically in the kitchen trying to prepare a meal that was just right. She complained to Jesus that Mary wasn't helping her and urged him to send Mary into the kitchen to help. Here is how Jesus responded in Luke 41 to 42. My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and will not be taken away from her. Martha was letting the details of doing everything just right control her. Mary had learned to linger at the feet of Jesus. My friends, Jesus always welcomes those who linger. Those who linger stay in a place longer than you deem necessary. They wait, they stay, they remain, they endure they last, they keep on, they persist, they continue, they are not rushed, they are not hurried. My friends, those who linger with God will radiate the character of Christ. In your lingering, God waits for you. God meets you. God surprises you. In your lingering, your spiritual receptivity is heightened. Your spiritual questions are giving space to go deeper. Your spiritual eyes are open to experience God in new ways. You can shift from working for God to being with God. You can invite God to reveal and heal, and you can talk with God instead of about God. Those of you who will linger will find that God lingers with you. The lingering mindset shifts. We are no longer leaving prayer or study time. Prayer and study come with us. The presence, the stillness, the grace follows us and transforms us and those that we encounter. My dear friends, regardless of your circumstances today, take time to linger with Jesus, to embrace him as he embraces you. Thank you and God bless.